Fat Guy Flies RC here. How y'all doing? Coming to you from the man cave. We're going to be doing the unboxing and then the build of the Arrows Hobby 1200 millimeter Trekker. Okay. Now, this is the ready to fly version. And so whenever you buy it, there's a power cord underneath. <laughs> Found that when I took it out of the brown box, and uh, sorry if I look at the keep looking at the screen. It's because I look at the screen and I look at you and look at the screen. That way I know what's going on. Um, but I've only opened it to see about that cord, but I haven't undo, haven't taken anything out of the box yet. Um, like all Arrows products, everything is packed nice and tight and secure. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Okay, and so right off the bat, we're going to cut the. A little bit of plastic and the tape here to undo these two sections here and maybe I am okay in this section here you've got your uh, prop so you're going to want to make sure you get your prop out of there right there very nice prop it is a it may say on here if I can see it 10 by 5 prop Okay, move that right here. You've got your wing spar, which is not a very big wing spar. It's like, I don't know, maybe 12 inches. Um, nice wing spar. And then you've got struts to support the wings. And these aren't, these aren't decorative, they're functional. You need these. And the main thing about this entire, this is a 1200 millimeter wingspan, but it's all compacted because the fuselage joins, that's why they're able to, and, and you, you should think, well, I don't, no, no, that's good, because number one, it decreases the amount of space in the box, and, and that way shipping rates are cheaper, therefore they can keep their prices down. This is a simple four-channel plane, and this is the ready, ready to fly, so it has its own receiver, own transmitter, a battery, and a charger, basically everything you need to get into the RC hobby and fly a, a good reliable plane is in this box. It's everything you need. So, manual, Brian Phillips, you, well you already done a review on this plane. Look, it's not folded, we love that. Me and him both are big fans of flat manuals that are not in the way, not folded up. And, there's nothing worse than having your manual all folded up and you're trying to read and it keeps wanting to do that and I'm right, <laughs> it just it drives you nuts. I just, you know, okay, do it again, right? Um, anyways, I just, I hate that. I hate it, man, I hate it. Um, simple charger comes with this. It will do two cell and three cell, so if I can get it out of the box. Um, let's see now. This is a 2S and 3S um, charger, and it will do, and it looks like uh, it's a balancing charger too. So you're just going to plug your uh, radio in. Take that cord, and when the lights go out, I'm going to assume that when the lights go out, let's see, it's going to be, okay, yeah, green light is full, uh, a solid red light means it's charging, so when it's solid green, you're done. Um, the linkages for the wings are already attached for you so you don't have to worry about that nice elevator or horizontal stabilizer looks like you've got a pinch hinge that uh, can't tell if it's got lamina or not but it's, it looks like a good quality good quality hinge or good quality and you've got you know, a little bit of move, but think about that elevator, the control circle goes the entire length of the elevator, so you don't really need a whole lot because a whole amount is moving. And um, just like those of you who own the E-Flight Cherokee, that full floating flying stab in the back, that whole thing moves. So you don't need much movement to get a very dramatic um, display of what's going on, or control. Nice little transmitter. That comes with it. Now it's going to require, I think you are going to have to add batteries. I, I did lie. You are going to have to. No, you don't. Oh, wait, no. 
comes with a battery. Thir I think it's a 1300 millimeter uh, lipo. This is the Arrows brand, Arrows plane, Arrows brand. Okay, it's a uh, 1300 Free S 25C lipo. You are going to have to add four AA batteries to run your transmitter. No big deal, you know. Probably got them laying around the house anyway, but I don't see them in the box anywhere. This is the only hardware you've got. You got your spinner, you got a back plate to put your landing gear on, and these are more than likely uh, screws for the struts and the landing gear. Okay. Landing gear. Keys in. You only put it in one way, you're not going to mess it up. And that's got some give to it, so it's going to help with some less than perfect landings. This is really neat. I've, I've had I've only had a few planes in the past where you've joined the fuselage together, and I've never had a problem with it with that design. Excuse me. Nice front nose gear with a spring to it, and that gear is big enough to where this thing should do just fine. Like how big and wide those tires are, it should be just fine in grass. And uh, which, whenever I do the maiden on this, I will demonstrate grass landing and pay and uh, runway landing. Second half of the uh, fuselage, you got your uh, rudder is already installed for you. And also, any linkage you'll have to hook up will be the um, elevator. So easy peasy, easy peasy lemon squeezy or however way that rhyme is supposed to go. All right, always check your cardboard or your styrofoam coffin, make sure there's nothing on inside or hidden. Sometimes they have little pockets and they'll put stuff down there and you gotta pay attention to that. And uh, you'll, you might miss something you need and you're thinking, hey, you didn't send me everything and you start complaining, well, your dumb butt didn't work. So, E-Flight was famous for that, for putting their manuals underneath, you, and that was the only thing underneath. You'd have everything in here, you think, oh, that's great, but where's the manual? And they had it flat taped to the bottom. Drove me up the wall, so I started looking, oh, it's underneath, <laughs> you know. Okay, look at this. This is your fuselage, okay? This is just going to join in there like that, and then you're gonna put a screw Looks like on both sides, yeah, and there's, look at this. Now this is where, when you, when you think about, you're not gonna have some cheap self-tapping screw going into dead plastic. No, you're gonna have a metal screw going into a metal housing on both sides. No need to glue the tail on. Those two screws are gonna hold that bad boy in place, no problem at all. And I want to tell y'all something, folks. I'm going to actually try to maiden this thing and fly this thing just the way it is, just with what you see here, okay? And we're going to put Fat Guy to the test, okay? So let's lay these parts out. I will grab the camera. Oh, yeah, real quick. Now, also, you've got a big cavernous space inside the fuselage, okay? Your receiver is just sort of laying in there, okay? You see, just kind of laying in there. And the vector, vector stabilization is already, and it's just kind of laying in there too. So I'm gonna put some two-sided tape and anchor them down, okay? When I do that during the build. And this is gonna be very simple, very simple. Um, got plenty of room, but just like those of you who, who may have purchased or are thinking about purchasing, the Arrows Technam 2010. This has the same type locking lid. Hear that click? If you don't hear that click when you put your radio, your, uh, radio hatch down, you're going to lose your hatch because it's going it's to vibrate right up and you're going to bank left and this thing's going to go flying off and you're going to think, what happened? What? Yeah, okay. You want to hear that click, okay? You don't hear that click, that's your fault. <laughs> I'm so mean. All right, so let's lay this out. We got our wings. Just want to show you the part count is is so low on this. 
and, and it's going to be a very, very easy build. Of course, you got to, you know, I got all my other debris uh, here. So let's grab the camera. Now it's going to move on you. Okay. So hold on to your lunch. We're about to move the camera. Move the camera. Okay. So what you got here? Got your fuse. Second half of the fuse. You've got both of your wing halves, got all your hardware, battery, wing struts, fuselage right there, horizontal stabilizer, landing gear, charger, cord to power the charger, and your manual and your receiver or transmitter. And that's it. So basically we're gonna we're gonna bolt on the back part of the fuselage, then we're gonna put on the landing gear, then we're gonna put on the wings. Okay, and then we're going to call that a build. So, you know what? Here, let's just go ahead and let's just do that. Let's just go ahead and do it. All right. So, first thing you're going to want to do, you're going to want to do, open up your little bag of goodies. Okay? And no matter what the manual says, no matter what any manual ever tells you I don't care what it says prop goes on last okay the last thing you want to be doing is powering up your airplane and getting everything ready to go and, oh boy and, and then next thing you know you've lost a finger and you got blood all over your model and you're going to the hospital because you got anxious all right put your prop on absolutely oh yeah the nose gears here absolutely last okay I'm gonna put that off to the side all right, we're going to look at our manual, and we're going to see, hey, look at this. All right, all these screws, every one of them looks like are going to be the same size. Let me empty out. Oh, by the way, when you're building models and putting these planes together, do yourself a huge favor, okay? Get these little metal trays. You can get like three of them for eight bucks at Harbor Freight or Tractor Supply or probably even Walmart. Get them. And then take your little metal bag that you've got full of metal screws and dump it in there. That way they don't drop all over the place. See, look at that. I don't have to worry about losing my screws now. I got enough screws loose up here. I don't need any, any on here. So, it looks like, and it is every Okay, I lied there. Almost all the screws are the same size. And then you do have some smaller screws that, that are um, Phillips head. The rest of them are all are these metal, look like maybe five millimeter, and they look like they're gonna take a two a two millimeter hex drive. So let's get our old handy dandy two millimeter hex drive out, and I'm correct. So, the majority of the build of this model is can be put together with a two millimeter hex drive. Must take a drink of coffee. Okay. Now, we're gonna set the transmitter off over here. We're gonna drop the landing gear on the floor. Move that over there. Take the battery and put it off the side. We're gonna confer with a manual. There's an insert about your uh, vector system, which that'll be a separate video. We're just going to put the plane together right now. All right. First thing you're going to want to do is slap together the fuselage. Now, when you do that, you're going to notice some wires up in there. Another thing you might want to pick yourself up at Walmart or wherever. These little hooks, okay, they just make your life so much easier when you've got these little hooks. Because you can reach in there and grab stuff. It just gives you more control. I think I, I get a, you get a two pack of those for like seven bucks. You know, buy them once and you've got them forever, unless you lose them. And uh, but what I've got here is these leads, which are labeled, okay, Rudder and elevator, okay? Rudder, elevator, that's what's gonna control them. So, 
I'm going to want to fish them down into the fuselage. The fuselage. The fuselage. I'm going to take two of these. They say 10 millimeter screws. So that's going to be these larger metal screws. Not the self tapping ones, but they're like this. I don't know if you can see that or not. And uh, let me see real quick if I've got my measuring. Oh, here, I've got, a, I've got a ruler. Okay? Just to make sure, go to your millimeter. Okay? 10 millimeter, okay, right there. So that, that's what I'm going to want. That's what I'm going to want. Take it, drop it down. You can see the channel that you're going into, okay? You're not going to be able to see this on camera, but if you're able to look, you, whenever you get the model, you look in there and you can maybe see the metal down there. You can see that you're going into and just kind of rock it a little bit to get it lined up correctly. Okay. All right, let's see if we can. Not quite getting biked there. Phone. Okay, this is where you're going to want to kind of, you may have to finagle a little bit, and if I run into difficulties, everyone's going to run into difficulties, sometimes you have to hold the model, hold your mouth a certain way, and get to get things to line up. So that was not what to line up, so what we'll do, we'll try the bottom one first. Yeah, because it is kind of at an angle just a little bit. So we'll take another one of these screws, drop it down in there. Yeah, and that one, that one's taking bite. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Tie it all the way and then back off just a touch. All right, now that should help line that one up, I would think. Difficulties. That's just part of the hobby. Don't let it bother you. You might sometimes have to start and stop and pull it out and get it back in there. But once you feel those threads line up, it's obvious. All right, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to hold off on that and Okay, sometimes just trying a different screw. It shouldn't matter, but sometimes trying a different screw. We'll do it. Y'all don't need to sit and watch me fight with. We're going to pause. I'm going to get it. You know what I'm doing. But these are things you're going to run into. So let me just pause for a second. Oh. All right. Now what I was trying to show you, the back of the fuselage, you're going to want to kind of finagle that back and forth, and then you'll feel that screw finally seat in and when it does it's obvious 
then you just tighten her down good and snug on both sides okay now and that's all I had to do I just had to keep playing with it until I found the right you, you'll tell when it when it hooks you, you'll, it's very obvious all right so now the next step once you got the fuselage remember we hooked the uh, we fished those two leads through there the next step after that is putting on the horizontal 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 stabilizer now this is a very similar design you'll notice there's like a little plastic channel right there and if you look on the back see that plastic channel right there okay kind of obvious that how that goes the plastic channel side is going to be the plastic channel side here that's going to fit in there just like that now there's not really going to be much of a click it's just going to kind of get tighter and it just fits in there I mean it's in there it kind of pressures in go ahead and hook up your uh, control rod also now the instructions say for the control rod or push rod whatever you want to call it to hook it up at the bottom lead okay the bottom hole the bottom hole of the horizontal uh, control arm or the control service arm and then the bottom hole on the uh, arm or on the servo arm okay slide that little piece of, of uh, fuel line back you're going to fit that in there that bottom hole okay fish it through and then just going to leave it hanging there for now you don't want to hook that up until you have bound the aircraft and you've got communication from the radio the other thing you could do which I'm going to go ahead and do now is hook it, hook it up with a servo tester now you may not have a servo tester so what you would do in this situation is leave it unhooked and then um, hook it up once you get it bound because you want to be able to hook it up when it's level but I want to make sure that it's level as right now so I can go ahead and hook it up so I just need a little battery and my little servo tester I'm not going to use the battery that came with it and I'm going to be charging it up right now and we're going to hook that up. so remember how we fish those through we just got to fish through and find the one that says elevator okay right there it is I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to my servo tester now like I said I'm doing this ahead of time just see, I don't know if you can you see that thing moving back there okay see it moving all right now I got it at the neutral point I know it's neutral so I can leave it alone put everything back in there put my hatch back down here it click okay what I'm going to do what I'm going to do is set the motor down take the battery from the servo tester and we're going to hook this up or you can see what I mean now that I know for sure that that servo is nice and level I can now hook up and the, the servo that is neutral position I can now hook up this linkage but if you look the clevis here is longer than the end of the control arm on the elevator so what I've got to do for that to, to make it mechanically trim so I'm going to take the end of this clevis and I'm going to turn it clockwise in other words right remember righty tighty lefty loosey right so that means it's going to make the clevis go in further to line up with the outer hole okay you just kind of grab a hold of it just don't be don't be super strong just tighten it up a little bit until you've got her lined up this might take several turns okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to stop the camera and it's going to take several turns for me to get in the thing you don't need to be watching turn 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 so hold on just a second we're going to stop the camera for just a minute okay we're back I had to turn that many many times but I finally got it to where the end of that was even see the very tip of that 
where that pin, that you'll see that pin there, the pin lines up perfectly with that front pin there. So I'm going to go ahead, I pull my slot, turn my uh, serve or my fuel tubing back, a little rubber rubber band. Connect that, you'll feel it clip in, and then slide your fuel tubing back up over that. And that's how that should look after all said and done. Let me make sure you can see that. All right. All right. Now, as you can see, I have, press that right here. Notice how this is lined up. My connection is all nice and secure. Now I know that that's going to be, that's at the neutral position. So now we can continue. All right. And yes, I got this plane stand makes everything nice and handy. All right. So next step is the nose gear. Now, the nose gear, you're going to see these two little, little teeth on either side. They're like little grabbers. Well, see the barrel, that barrel? That's going to go towards the end of your plane. That's going to fit right in there. And then you're going to kind of fish that between those two teeth, kind of rock it back and forth, maybe even take your fingers. And you're going to kind of pull them apart and get one. And you kind of rock it back and forth. And then once those teeth are on either side of that barrel, okay, then you can push that in. Well, maybe. On both sides of that barrel there. Yeah, there you go. Just kind of rock it in there. And then those teeth will spring in. Hold on. Okay, those teeth will spring in and grip grip that thing and that's in there and that's turning the servo. Let's cut for just a second. I think my camera may have died. Hold on just a second. Stop for a second. Okay. Camera cut. Yeah, when the camera dies up here, then I think it dies there. So anyway. <laughs> okay, so that's just going to drop in there and you're going to feel that connection. In fact, it's actually turning the servo. So that takes care of that. Now, Next step is your main landing gear. Now, the landing gear has a little, little dip there. That's going to give you a little idea of where it keys in. If you look at the bottom of the fuselage, you see that little dip there? Well, the FBI calls that a clue as to how that's going to fit. Oh, look! Fits perfectly. Okay. You're going to take, hey, look, another thing. I'm not trying to oversimplify this. I'm just showing you how user-friendly the design is of this plane. And I'm going to try to overemphasize that. And you're going to take three of these five millimeter screws and drop them in there. Two millimeter hex drive is all that you need. Um, for the majority, for 90% 90 of the bill, you will need a small Phillips head screwdriver for uh, the wing struts. Now these screws don't travel very far. They're just a few turns in there to where you see they're flush. Where you see that they're flush and you're there. You're done. Landing gear is now done. Now we can turn our attention. Let me verify with the old instruction manual. That was not folded. I'm so happy. Okay, yes, we're going to do the wings. Okay? We're going to take your wing spar. Yeah, that and slide it through this big obvious hole in the plastic doubler. Take your battery hatch off, okay? Take your wing. There's a hole here, a recessed hole right here. You can't see it with the spars in there. Right there, okay? That's where you're going to take the servo wire that's going to be attached, and you're going to feed that through there straight as you can, line up your spar, and it's very obvious how that wing attached. It's got two big plastic doublers, 
screws go in into metal, metal screws into metal housing, couldn't be nicer, okay? This is where you need a tool like this. Well, you don't have to have it, but it makes your world a lot easier, just like these metal trays and magnetic trays. It's a little grabber on the end of it, because you can see that wire hanging down, but you're not going to get your hand in there to get a hold of it. So if you get this, fish that through there, grab a hold of that bad boy, and looky there. You've got it right there. Now it's easy to get a hold of. Take your other wing. Slide it onto the carbon spar. Put your servo lead through that plastic hole, through that big opening. It's a rectangular shaped opening, about as wide as your little finger. Slide the wing on, okay? You're going to take four of your uh, 10 millimeter hex screws that take a two millimeter hex drive. I know I keep repeating that, but it's just, it makes it so much easier. One, two tools is all you really need. Honestly, to put the thing together. Okay? Oh yeah, I arrange for this. All right, I'm gonna drop them in there. Now, one may grab, the other may not. So whatever one grabs, in this case is going to be the front one. It's obvious when I grab it tight. Now the other one you may have to, you may want to just spin and spin on it. Let's see if this takes for me. Actually, no. It, it grabbed right off the bat. Okay. Sometimes one will grab and one won't. The one won't. So whatever happens, say this one here was to grab a nice and tight. Now I'm going to kind of pull this wing in and try to attach it. If this is the one that grabbed, I try to pull the wing in that direction and. and um, Make, make it attach. But if they attach right off the bat, you grab, see that one's not grabbed. In fact, it came right back out. So, and this one isn't either. So I'm going to push this. Yeah, I didn't have it all the way in there. So I'm going to kind of put a little pressure on it, pushing the wing towards the fuselage. Okay. Yeah, now see, she grabbed. Now I'm going to take the wing. I'm going to kind of put my arm up here, push the wing gently in, kind of using my own weight, which is considerable. <laughs> I'm going to kind of pull, right now I'm kind of pulling the wing with my hand and trying to pull that wing in to see if that will tighten and then I grab it. And it did. Okay. Sometimes you're going to have to finagle the wing a little bit. Just to, And that applies to any, any wing, any, any airplane wing that you're putting on. Free pro tip, free build tip. <laughs> but really, this is not a build, this is an assembly. I'm not having to measure, cut, or anything, so this really is an assembly. Okay? Battery hatch on. Make sure you hear that click anytime you take this plane out and put a battery in there, you're going to fly it. We're going to turn the plane over. Okay? Oh, I'm getting one of these stands. This is an Ernst brand, I think, Ernst, E R N S T uh, brand, uh, the large uh, plane holder. You can have it real big, real small, it's conf uh, configurable. Is that a word? Configurable? Customizable? Whatever. But well, anyways, we're going to put the struts on. But they, the plane stands and make them very handy. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting where you can't get these struts wrong, either right or left. If you look, there's a shape of how this is. Each of these struts on the curved flat size only fit a certain way. That one doesn't fit down in there, see? That doesn't really fit down in there. But if I put it over here, now it fits in there like a glove. So that means, so you can't get it wrong. If it doesn't fit right, right off the bat, you got the wrong strut. Take the other strut and put it in. These little pin here, okay, little, like a T-shaped pin, okay, little, little, little lie there, that is going to line up into this little plastic channel here. Little plastic channel right there. Okay? So, we're going to line that in there. Just kind of wedge it in there. And that's going to fit in there. Now, remember I said you had two little um, Phillips head screwdrivers? Well, that's when you're going to use these. Try to use a magnetic screwdriver. I want to show you something on this. On the strut connector here. 
it, it's real small, so you're not going to see them. But it had, just had to trust me. There's a re it's recessed where that screw fits in. It has a recessed uh, head in there. So when you put your screw in there, when that screw fits flat into that recessed head, head, you know you're there. You don't have to go any further. Get down to that. That's the bottom. So put that in there. Feel that. You know what I should have done? Okay, that's in there nice and it's nice and tight, flat, leave it alone. I should have put the this in first, but it doesn't matter. Two, three, the 10 millimeter hex head, uh, uh, 10 millimeter drive screw with a two millimeter hex drive. That's in there, that struts on. I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side, okay? Okay, that's in there. Now I'm going to take a little, it's a little eight millimeter long uh, Phillips head screwdriver that has a self tapping, has a sharp end. Put it on the same, the same procedure as I did on that strut over there. There's a recessed head opening. Put the screw in until it's nice and flush, it goes into that head. You can feel the screw push out the other side on your finger. Stop right there. Your struts are in there. Your wings are on. For all intents and purposes, outside of the prop, this plane is built. Now, another really cool feature. Oh, and by the way, you're going to have a back plate and a nut. Okay? You're going to take your back plate, which is this. It has a, I guess, octagon or hexagon shape. Which was hexagon six, hexagon shape, six-sided. Opening here and on the prop adapter. Okay, that's going to slide on there. It, once you get on there, it's, there's only one way it fits, so you can't mess that up. You're going to take, well, anyway, you slide that on, but you're going to take your prop, okay? And you see the curve, the line of this. When you put that prop on, the end of that prop should rest right on there just like that, okay? So we're going to put our hex on there, spin that around, put our prop in there. We're going to put our back plate on, which is our, the back of big, big flat washer, metal washer, and then you're going to put your nut on, okay? Where you're going to take your pair of pliers, grab a hold of your, of your prop like this, and you're going to turn away from your hand. You're going to hold your prop, okay, and you're going to turn away from your hand. In other words, you should be turning the nut right or towards the prop. But see, the prop is always going to spin left, so you don't ever have it's going to spin this way. Well, the nut tightens that way. So it's almost like self-tightening itself as it flies, okay? The prop's on, the spinner head just pops on there. Um, now mine doesn't give me that really satisfying click in, but it's on there. So what I will probably do, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I could glue that on there, but instead, and I don't think this is going to be enough really to throw the weight off. Um, well, you know, I want to take just a very small piece of tape and I'm going to put it on. Well, you know what? What I will do, because my, see, my prop, my, my, uh, my nose can come off fairly easy. So what I might do is put just a little drop of CA or light glue on either side so that mine, uh, pops in. I doubt this would come off because the force is going against it, but as it spins, the centrifugal force will push out. It should lock it in because it's kind of heat. Um, but for my own personal, okay, I want to make sure it's tight. I might put a drop of CA or some glue on either side, an equal drop on each side, just to lock in that, that, that spinner. I may not. I'll fly her like this, and if she does fine, then I'll leave it alone. Um, because like I say, it does kind of key in there, and it pushes in. So the centrifugal force of the prop spinning should actually make it key in even tighter. So I shouldn't have to worry about it. But 
If it does come off, it's bright white. I should be able to find it pretty easy. All right, well, there you go. Now, the, the plane is basically, is, other than you know, hooking her up the radio and getting her all tri uh, uh, bound up, this is pretty much all we got going. I mean, the plane is, is together. It's a good looking plane. Um, the radio setup I will do in a separate video because um, that was a little more intricate. Um, but should not be hard. It should be a short video. And I'll probably attach it maybe to a. This video is going to be long enough as it is. So I'll make another separate video for that. But there you go. The, the Arrows Trekker is together. And this is a simple four channel plane. You should be able to get a good 10 minute flight, you know, with throttle management out of it and still come back with some battery left, which is what you want. My, personally, I want to have 20 to 30 percent left, maybe a little more, left on the battery after I'm done flying, okay? Because that's a great storage rate, 30, 40, anywhere from 20 to 40, anywhere in there is a good storage rate for that battery, okay? And uh, this is just a nice light plane. It's got nice markings on it. Very bright, and it's a good size. It's 1,200 meter or 1.2 meters, and um, should fit in almost any vehicle. Um, you know, can't say anything about more about it. I mean, other than I need to go fly it and let's see what, what what she does. But anyways, this is Fat Guy Flies RC coming to you from the man cave. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and build and put up with my controlled chaos in here. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, there will be an affiliate link. Yes, Hobby Zone has invited me to help sell their products. But I made it very clear to Mr. Dan and Hobby Zone that if I think the plane is a piece of crap, I'm going to say it's a piece of crap. I'm going to give an honest opinion, okay? And he said, you know, basically they, they inferred to me that they would expect no less. They want honest reviews. If they've got a problem with a the plane, they want to know about it. If their plane excels at something, they want to know about it. But no matter what, if I say something's wrong about a plane, I'm going to make sure that's not me doing something wrong before I say, hey, the plane's messed up. No, I'm going to make sure that it is a defect first before I say anything about it. But if it's good and it doesn't have any problems, hey, no problems. It's a good plane. If it does have problems, I'm going to say, here's what I'm finding and here's why. So I'll let you make the decision. But regardless of whether it's an affiliate link or not, I'm honest about these things. And I don't think on, that a Hobby Zone would want any less. They, they, they really seem like good, honest people. They've been, they've helped, they have dealt with me wonderfully. They have treated me wonderfully. There's many reviews about how well the Hobby Zone is and how, you know, Dan makes it even better there. I've actually had people tell me that on my own site. And uh, I just, from what I know about people and character, they want honest reviews. They don't want a bunch of, you know, blowing smoke up the back end of the wazoo to sell a plane. They want to say, yeah, it's a good plane, or no, here's a drawback. Here's what we need to fix, you know. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure if there's something wrong, I'm going to say, make sure that it's not me, that it's the plane. Or, or if it is the plane, I'll say, here's what we need to do to fix it. Or here's what I've done wrong, so don't do this if you get the plane. But anyways, after all that back and forth, <laughs> I'll have an affiliate link for this plane. It looks very promising. It it feels very well. It's very light plane. It should be a very simple plane to fly. And it is a beginner trainer. And we'll give her a test go. I'm going to fly her on this supplied uh, transmitter and the supplied battery and, and the chargers going according to their specs. So, all right, folks. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget faith, family, friends. Bye-bye.